how much research I do, there's always that one complaint in the comments about me not knowing the original source material. So today I went down into the depths. And you know what, random commenter? You were absolutely right. There, buried deep in the obscure forgotten lore was the answer I was looking for. The Last Jedi is the name of a Star Wars comic from 1981. So obviously the plot of the new movie will be clearly inspired from that. So let's see what Disney has in store for us. In the comic, Luke and Leia travel to a remote planet to rescue a prince. Sounds plausible. And it's there that they meet a brain-damaged bug man who carries a stick like it's a lightsaber. Okay, and that guy's name is Jedediah. So when he dies, Luke refers to him as the last Jedi. <laughs> Internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that'll tempt you to give in to your skepticism and succumb to the dark side of your favorite franchises. Do it. So, The Last Jedi is right around the corner. The red carpet world premiere is happening later this week. And you know what? I have something to prove. I've already gone out on a limb to make a prediction as to who Ray's parents are, but I think I can go one step further. This is my last chance to prove to you that old team theorist over here is digging deeper and looking closer at the evidence than anyone else out there. And what better way to prove that I'm worthy of my theory salt than by predicting how this year's biggest blockbuster is gonna play out before anyone even gets to see it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Before anyone in the world sees this movie, I am going to call the major twists of Star Wars The Last Jedi based on trailer analysis and good old-fashioned research. And to make things a little more interesting, let's put some stakes on it. If I'm right, then you have to subscribe to this channel, come back to the Film Theorist channel, and force push that subscribe button. And if I'm wrong, I don't know, that's your side of the deal. Let me know what I should do in the comments. I'll vote the thing that you want to see me do, I'll see it. We'll make it happen in a future video. It's only fair. No weird kinky stuff. Deal? Deal. I'll just assume that you're making a handshake gesture towards your computer screen right now. Like I am. Like an idiot. Okay, so if we're sticking with the whole Star Wars rhymes George Lucas quote thing, then The Last Jedi will be the tense middle chapter like The Empire Strikes Back. At least, I hope it's the dark and surprising Empire Strikes Back middle chapter, and not the slow-paced, terrible dialogue Attack of the Clones middle chapter. I don't like sand. <laughs> And judging by the hype director Ryan Johnson is giving his own movie, we should expect the unexpected. He's teased that moments of the movie will quote, shock the audience, and that one scene in particular will leave us unable to breathe. So it's my task today to figure out how this movie is gonna take our breaths away Vader style. There's a lot we don't know. I mean, we don't even know some of the character names. One of the new characters being introduced to this movie is played by Benicio Del Toro, but everyone has been super tight-lipped about what his character's name actually is. It seems awfully suspicious. I mean, officially Officially, he's labeled as DJ, but DJ? Yeah, not buying it. Nice try, marketing people, but you expect me to believe that a badass Star Wars character is gonna be named after a teenage girl from Full House? Besides, some dude at GameStop already determined that the toy version of this character has a helmet inscription in Orabesh that translates to Don't Join, aka DJ for short. My prediction? This character is gonna be the Lando Calrissian of this movie, the laid-back, smooth-talking double-crosser. Are you slimy double-crossing no-good swindler? Anyway, that's just a random observation. Get ready to get those sub-fingers a-clickin' because I've looked at all the information I could find and I am confident that I've got the ending of The Last Jedi figured out. And Ryan Johnson is right. It's Shocking. Now, you know how movies sometimes reveal a bit too much from their trailers? Well, I've now seen the teaser and trailers for The Last Jedi more times than I've seen the sun in the past few months, and I believe the clues to the plot of the movies are there in a few very important quotes and images. Let's start by reviewing the main things that we see and hear across these. Luke is training Rey on Octu, but doesn't seem too happy about it, and might actually quit, leading us to important quote number one. I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. He also has a major hot take on the Jedi in important quote number two. I only know one truth. It's time for the Jedi to end. Over in Kylo Renland, we get a little monologue from Snoke talking about how special he is in important quote number three. When I found you, I saw raw, untamed power. And beyond that, something truly special. 
shot. Kylo Ren's philosophy about his parents is pretty well summed up in important quote number four. Let the past die. Kill it. If you have to. And finally, Rey is feeling a bit lost herself, and based on the trailer, seems to be asking Kylo Ren for help in important quote number five. I need someone to show me my place in all this. As far as imagery, in both the teaser and the trailers, we get a look at something very rare in the Star Wars universe, books, including one specific book with a very mysterious symbol on it. And lastly, we have an image of Snoke helping Rey achieve her yoga goals by forcing her into a painful backbend. These all might seem like disparate pieces, but there's a pretty clear through line here. Although the whole crew will absolutely be in The Last Jedi, this is primarily a movie about Rey, Luke, Kylo Ren and the bonds they form, and more importantly, the bonds they break with each other. So let's start the deep dive predictions with our OG hero Luke Skywalker, and what we can expect from him. Obviously from the trailers he has some help to give Rey, but it's not like she's gonna show up and everything goes off without a hitch. The two Luke quotes I mentioned before gives us a strong indication of prediction number one, he will not finish Rey's training, much the same way that Yoda was reluctant to train Luke and then never finished doing so in The Empire Strikes Back. As for why Luke believes the Jedi need to end, that conclusion is probably connected to why he's on Octu in the first place. In The Force Awakens, Han says that the people who knew Luke believed he went off in search of the first Jedi Temple after Kylo Ren turned on him and killed his students. People that know him best think he went looking for the first Jedi Temple. Well, he found that first Jedi Temple on Octu, and the reason he went there is almost certainly to find the books we see in the trailers. That symbol you see on the book is actually the Jedi symbol, meaning that these books are almost certainly the ancient Jedi texts known as the Journal of the Wills. The Journal of the Wills are basically a source of ancient wisdom and history of the galaxy. You remember Chirrut Imwe and Baze Malbus from Rogue One? Well, they were known as the Guardians of the Wills, so this isn't coming completely out of nowhere. Now, while we don't have a ton of information on what is inside the Journal of the Wills, there are two quotes that could be useful to us. The first is from the novelization of The Force Awakens, which states, Quote, first comes the day, then comes the night, after the darkness shines through the light. The difference, they say, is only made right by resolving of gray through refined Jedi sight. Solid rhyme scheme there, Jedi. Picking apart the poetry like a 10th grader learning the fine works of William Carlos Williams, it's clear this Jedi text is saying that the Jedi need to refine their sight to create gray, bringing the absolute dark side and absolute light side together to bring balance to the Force. Which, I gotta say, I am not opposed to. I mean, what good guy doesn't also want to use Force lightning? And now, maybe you'll be able to. And Luke might believe he's the one to make this happen, based on another quote Quote from the Journal of Wills, quote, And in the time of greatest despair there shall come a savior, and he shall be known as the Son of the Sons. Now admittedly this quote is non-canon, but Luke could easily be considered the Son of the Sons given his home planet of Tatooine is a giant ball of sand and sadness governed by two hot suns. If Luke believes in these quotations, he may believe both that his mission isn't over, and that it's his task to bring together the darkness and the light, maybe even through his own death which would, of course, make him the last Jedi. And before you point out that the film's title in other languages points to the word Jedi being plural, keep in mind that the director very directly stated that Luke himself is, in fact, the last Jedi, and more importantly, that it's explicitly stated that Luke is the last Jedi in the opening crawl of The Force Awakens. Reading sometimes does prove essential, but there's also a clue that Luke's decision for the Jedi to end isn't one he's making passively. He is going out swinging. In the internet, National version of The Last Jedi's poster, Luke is no longer in the background, but is instead in the middle holding a lightsaber. Now, there have been a lot of official Star Wars posters over the years, I've looked at them all, but in every single one, if you're shown holding a lightsaber, you are going to be involved in a big lightsaber battle before the end of the movie. Sure seems like Luke isn't gonna go down quietly, and based on the rest of that poster, it means he'll probably end up fighting Kylo Ren towards the end of the film. So, where does that leave Rey? Well, as KG as everyone involved in The Last Jedi has been about giving things away, they've also given so many interviews that we can start to piece a few things together. Daisy Ridley said at a panel in April that she and Luke might not have a perfect mentor-mentee relationship, and said specifically that, quote, it's difficult to meet your heroes because they might not be what you expect. This reinforces what I said earlier, that it's likely 
that Rey won't complete her training with Luke and will end up going off on her own. If Rey recognizes the power of the Force, but then also realizes that the mystique of the Jedi and Luke Skywalker can't or won't give her the answers she's so desperate for, is it such a stretch to believe that she'd turn to the dark side? Dun dun dun! Yeah, yeah. I know, I know that saying a Star Wars character turns evil is basically my whole shtick. Yes, I was wrong about Luke, but don't treat me like the Mad Pat who cried Sith, because this one seriously makes all of the sense. In a big interview with Entertainment Weekly, Daisy Ridley says that, quote, the resistance isn't all that much to Rey, implying that she could likely be swayed away from it. Wouldn't the logical place to turn be towards Kylo Ren? Especially if he ends up being revealed to be her brother. And let me just say it, I know people disagree with me on the whole Rey is Kylo sister theory, but I am sticking to it. Especially since there is no chance that Disney is letting her parents be Star Wars Battlefront exclusive, non-force using characters made by EA. Sorry for all you Dell Iden truthers out there. And yes, I know in Aftermath it says that Luke left her behind on Jakku, but it doesn't actually say who the parents are specifically, so the answer still has yet to be decided. Meaning Han and Leia still makes the most sense. Regardless, I already made a video for that theory, and honestly, it doesn't really matter for today's theory. From their first few encounters in The Force Awakens, Kylo Ren says Rey needs a teacher and that he can be the one to show her the ways of the Force. I can show you the ways of the Force! Show her the ways of the Force. If Rey's looking for a teacher, she knows where to find one. Director Ryan Johnson also gives what feels like a pretty big hint in that same Entertainment Weekly piece where he says about Rey, quote, You're going to meet people who you think are going to help, but don't. And help is going to come from unexpected places. End quote. Sounds to me like Rey goes to Luke searching for help, Luke ends up giving up on her, and she's left to turn to Kylo Ren, who is eager to extend a helping hand. This is all further supported by this production photo of Rey with Kylo Ren in the background. She seems awfully calm, considering she's right in front of a guy who tried to kill her in the last movie. But maybe you feel like this would come out of nowhere, that there's no hint of the dark side near Rey at any point. Well, how about this? You remember that Snoke quote from earlier about seeing raw power in Kylo Ren? He's not talking about Kylo Ren. In Taiwan, the subtitles for that very same trailer use a very specific character for the pronoun you when Snoke says, when I found you. And that character is specifically feminine in the Taiwanese language, not a masculine usage. So unless there's some unexpected backstory on Kylo Ren, Snoke is absolutely talking about Rey. When I found you. Ray. And with this reveal, suddenly a lot of pieces from The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi start falling into place. Snoke sensed Rey in the Force when she was very young, prompting her parents, who may or may not be Han and Leia, along with Luke's help to exile her somewhere where they thought she'd never be found, Jakku. So Snoke went after her older brother, Ben, instead. Now that Snoke has found Rey, remember that image of the two of them from the trailer, would it really be that hard to turn her to the dark side? Adam Driver says, again in that same Entertainment Weekly piece, <laughs> which really revealed a lot, that his character Kylo Ren began turning against his parents because he felt they cared more about the Resistance than they cared about him. Wouldn't that be enough to turn Rey against an idol who rejects her and parents who abandoned her? So here is your shocking ending to this year's biggest movie, Rey's bad experience with Luke, coupled with the knowledge that she's Kylo Ren's sister, leads her to ask Kylo to help her find my place in all this. One way or another, Rey shows herself as open to the dark side. Luke comes to fight Kylo Ren, and potentially Snoke as well, thinking he'll have Rey on his side, but she turns on him during the battle. The Kylo Ren monologue about killing the past is advice he gives to Rey to help her become who she was meant to be. Maybe Snoke gives her a little force push along the side, and they all unite to kill Luke, officially making him the last Jedi. Oh, oh, pretty dark, right? And before you say that the Star Wars universe would never go in that direction, well, hate to break it to you, but it already has. Granted, this is no longer canon, but in the novel Sacrifice, which is part of the Star Wars Legacy of the Force series, the son of Han and Leia, Jason Solo, kills his sister's Jedi Master, Mara Jade Skywalker. So, what you have is a young Solo killing an older Skywalker who also happens to be his sister's Jedi teacher. Sound familiar? It's already happened in the extended universe once. Now all the pieces are in place to make it happen in the movies. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. 
Ever wonder about the economic ramifications of blowing up the Death Star? What it would do to the entire galaxy? Are the rebels truly doing a good thing here? Well then, click the box to the left, and hey, here's the subscribe button. Remember, when you see Star Wars The Last Jedi and that ending looks a little bit familiar, remember that deal we made. We shook on it. Or at least we both pointed our hands at the screen and did a shaking motion on it. So make sure you hold up your end of the bargain and come back and force push that subscribe button. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go wait in line for the new movie because it is coming out soon. And I want to be the first to see how right I am, hopefully. Fingers crossed. No matter how much research I do, there's always that one complaint in the comments about me not knowing the original source material. So today I went down into the depths. And you know what, random commenter? You were absolutely right. There, buried deep in the obscure forgotten lore was the answer I was looking for. The Last Jedi is the name of a Star Wars comic from 1981. So obviously the plot of the new movie will be clearly inspired from that. So let's see what Disney has in store for us. In the comic, Luke and Leia travel to a remote planet to rescue a prince. Sounds plausible. And it's there that they meet a brain-damaged bug man who carries a stick like it's a lightsaber. Okay, and that guy's name is Jedediah. So when he dies, Luke refers to him as the last Jedi. <laughs> Corner. The red carpet world premiere is happening later this week. And you know what? I have something to prove. I've already gone out on a limb to make a prediction as to who Ray's parents are, but I think I can go one step further. This is my last chance to prove to you that old team theorist over here is digging deeper and looking closer at the evidence than anyone else out there. And what better way to prove that I'm worthy of my theory salt than by predicting how this year's biggest blockbuster is gonna play out before anyone even gets to see it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Before anyone in the world sees this movie, I am going to call the major twists of Star Wars The Last Jedi based on trailer analysis and good old-fashioned research. And to make things a little more interesting, let's put some stakes on it. If I'm right, then you have to subscribe to this channel. Come back to the Film Theorist channel and force push that subscribe button. <laughs> internet welcome to film theory the show that'll tempt you to give in to your skepticism and succumb to the dark side of your favorite franchises do it so the last jedi is right around the corner